Yeah. While, while this box can also be considered as a prism because the opposite faces are equal in area and parallel to each other. Same is the case with this unsharpened pencil and a table weight. What about a table weight? Hmm? Well, was a table weight sir, a prism? No, sir, it is a pen and all. Hmm. It was not a prism, right? No? Uh, yes, sir, it's a pyramid. It's not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Ahmed hasn't joined yet, no? No. Okay, okay. No, no. Okay. Okay. Anyways, now we had done questions up to, I guess, question number four. Hmm? Yes, sir. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. See, question number five. Is a square prism same as a cube? Yes. Yeah. We can say that. Yes, sir. Yes, right, sir. It's the same as a prism. How do yeah, you explain it has that? Parallel size, uh, it has pa uh, mm. parallel uh, size and the area of the both the, um, mm. squares are same. Mm. Yes, both sir. polygons, opposite polygons of bo opposite um, squares are same. Good. Yes. Verify Euler's formula for this solids. You guys have uh, studied about Euler formula. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ar Arham, what is the Euler's formula? Um, a face plus a um, vertex equals to uh, edges uh, plus two. Very good. What face plus vertex equals to number of edges added to plus two. Right. Yes. Okay. So for these solids, we have to um, verify this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So see solid number one. Okay. How many faces are in this one? Figure looks Bye. like a bit of messy, but we can see one, two, three. Okay. Four here. Right. And below then five, right? One, one at the bottom as well. Yes. Five. No, there's more than five in this one. Look why. If you were to draw it like this, the figure is actually like this. Getting it? Oh, yes. Since it's a 3D figure. Right now, yes, yes. And right. Yes, sir. So it's the seven. front faces, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the weight is going to be one eight. more, no? Eight here. Yes, sir. Eight yes, faces eight. are it's there. Eight. Yes. So eight. How many vertexes are there? The, uh, ten. One, two, three, four, Smoke. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, no? 11, yeah. 11. Now, edges, count the number of edges. 1, so 2, 16. 3, okay. 4, 5, and 6, 1 at the back. And 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 2, 13, 14, 17. 15, 16, 17 now. It's, so it's 17. 17 actually. Getting it. So 17 yes. plus 2, here it's 19, here it's 19. Right. Yeah, so same. it gets verified mm. for this, right? Now. Okay, good. Yes, sir. Okay, same thing you guys can do for the second one also. Quickly verify for this one. Do tell me how many faces yeah. are there, Arhan. Do tell me how many faces are in this one. And Arham, you tell me how many vertex are in this one. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah, see. So there are nine faces. There are nine faces. Okay. The front one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. There are nine faces. Vertex. How many vertex are there? Um, nine. Nine vertex. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Very good. Okay. Now, count the number of edges in this one. Sir, so it's yeah, it's verified. It's verified. The edges are sixteen. Yes, sixteen. Yes, good. Good. Very good. Right, so 9 plus 9, that is 18, and 16 plus 2, 18. 18, right. yeah. Good, so it's also verified. 7 number, this one you guys can solve it at your home, right? No need to discuss it yes, further. Sir. We have already yes. done this one. Now, mm -hmm. question number 8. Can a polyhedron have 10 faces, 20 edges, and 15 vertex? So we can verify this using what? Your formula. Euler's formula. Right. If LHS and RHS yes. are equal, then it is yes, possible. Sir. Right. <laughs> okay. Sir, no. It's no. Because if you were to see F plus V equals to E plus 2 here, faces are 10. 10 plus 15. 
plus 15 is not equals to 20 plus 22 is not equal to 25. Okay. Yes. Okay. So shall we start the new chapter today then? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. okay let me quickly drop a reminder for Ahmed. Okay. Because I don't want, don't want him to miss the new chapter. So the new chapter into the menstruation. Menstruation, exactly. Okay, sir. Menstruation. Yeah, just give me a minute. Call Ahmed. Okay. So both of you guys uh, haven't just, I mean, uh, Arham, you haven't just studied this chapter yet, no? Like in the US school, was the chapter completed? No, when I uh, when I took the admission, it was almost uh, mm. a quarter way done, but I have the most the most part of it. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So let's start the chapter. Yes. Menstruation. No, in the chapter menstruation now, basically, we will be studying about how do we calculate area perimeter, surface areas, different types of surface areas, uh, volume yes. of 2D and 3D figures, right? Yes. Getting it. So yeah. basically, menstruation is that branch of mathematics that studies what? Measurement of geometric figures, right? And yes. their parameters. What yes, are the sir. parameters a geometric figure is going to have? It will be having some length, some volume, yes. some shape. It will have some surface the area. Height. height. Okay. Little surface area. These are the things which we are going to yeah, totally basically totally study totally in the chapter. Totally. Right. So what yeah. are the things we are going to cover in this chapter? First, we will be recalling some basic concepts. Okay. Then we will yeah. talk about area of trapezium, area of quadrilateral polygon. These are your 2D geometric shapes. Yes. 2D geometric shapes. We will study about how do we calculate their area, how do we calculate their perimeter, etc. Right. Then yes. coming to the 3D figures like cuboid, cube, solid cylinder, hollow cylinder. Right. We will be yes. talking about how do we calculate their surface area and we will also talk yeah, about yeah, how do we calculate their volume as well. These are the 3D shapes. Yes. Right. Here it's better to call it only. 2D geometric figures only, not shapes. Yeah. 3D shapes. Right. So we will also have a look at how do you calculate volume of the 3D figures. <laughs> and what is the difference in between the in calculation of solid cylinder and hollow cylinder's volume? Getting it. Okay. okay. So as I said, it deals the chapter menstruation deals with the measurement of area, perimeter surface area and volume of different types of shapes right so these are the general types of shapes which you can see here apart from this you have got polyhedron cells right yes okay now let's recall some of the basic concepts which you guys must have studied earlier and you guys have been studying so far okay like 2d and 3d shapes you guys are aware of both of them have got surface area right now yeah. yes sir. 2d 2d you know it is basically um, a shape that is surrounded by three or more straight lines in a plane, right? Yes, so it, that is yeah. a 2D shape. And if a shape is surrounded by a number of surfaces or planes, then it is called a 3D shape, right? Yeah. A 3D shape is also called a solid shape. Why? Because 3D shapes have got height. Getting it, guys? Yes, sir. While yeah. a 2D shape does then not have height. any height. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay. So, in the case of 2D shapes, how many dimensions do they have? Two. Uh, two, yes, sir. Exactly. There are only two dimensions. While in the case of 3D shapes, they are three height. And height. Three dimensions. Exactly, guys. Okay. So, what are the things we can measure for a 2D figure? Can we measure the volume of a 2D figure? <laughs> no, sir. No. We can simply measure their area and their perimeter. Perimeter, <laughs> right? yeah. Mm, yes. Okay. So talking about the basic concept that... <coughs> talking about the basic concept, what is the area? <laughs> so it is simply the surface area covered by the borderline of the figure. So suppose I have taken four lines here, right? Yeah. 
okay yes, and it encloses a encloses a figure here so what is the area taken up by this lines here these are straight lines so that we basically yeah. call as area area right. yes okay so suppose you grew a particular crop on your land okay so you yes, have sir. to first calculate the uh, amount of land availability how much land you have got what will be the um, uh, amount of seed required to sow in that piece of land so how much fertilizers do we need how much uh, how much water does it require getting it yeah so yes sir so for these purposes we basically calculate area right and what is the unit to mm. calculate area for example if you are measuring a piece of a small paper you will be measuring it in centimeter square right yes, or if you were to yeah if you were to measure even a smaller piece of object you will be measuring it in millimeter, millimeter square and yeah. if you were to measure um what is the area surface area body um of a bacteria you will then take help of micrometers right yes yes sir right so it will be micrometer micrometer square and so on yeah. and on getting it guys so yeah. unit of the area is Some square part. if the, if the length unit the square of the length unit so whatever yes. the length unit is given the length unit could be centimeter square millimeter square and so on and on it could be kilometer square as well or it yeah. could be miles as well generally the standard unit of um, the area we see it is square meter getting it square yeah meter all right so <coughs> we have got an idea of what area is and in fact we are already aware of it now what is the perimeter yeah. perimeter is simply the boundary the... the length of the boundary of a of yes, a yes, 2d sir. figure right yeah. so whether whether it's a square here whether it's a rectangle or whether it's a circle or whether it's a hemis a hemisphere or semi circle hmm. right so in order to in order to calculate the length of the boundary of these figures we call the term to be as perimeter Perimeter. getting it yes right so will it have a different unit or the same unit like Third if the different. length of it will obviously have a different unit as compared to area yes, right sir. because yes. the values do not get multiplied here simply it gets added it's here square. right so yeah. a plus a plus a plus a that is simply 4a 4a yes you are talking about perimeter Yeah, right. yeah. So it is calculated in different manner for different figures, right? Mm. Okay. So that we know about here. What is perimeter? Now look at some of the common figures. Look at some of the two D shapes. We are already, in fact, familiar of all these figures, right? Yeah. Okay. So a square and rectangle. Can we not also call them as parallelogram? Yes. Yes. They parallel. Yeah. Yeah. They are also called parallelogram, but they. their areas are calculated in different manner since the length of their boundaries are not equal in the yeah. in uh, each edges each edges mm -hmm. vary getting it okay yeah in fact uh, this figure is just has been elongated so it looks like a rectangle the first one, right yes. yeah, yeah yeah it should have been only this one. yes sir this much only i know okay so look at the sum of the formulas To in order to calculate the area of a square, you have got side square, right now. <coughs> okay, then rectangle length into breadth. That's it. Triangle, you guys know, it's simply half into base into height. Height is basically the perpendicular distance from the opposite vertex to the base. Getting it. So this is the way base, and this is the vertex, and the perpendicular line that you draw on the base that gives you what height. right okay so half into base into height that will basically give you the area of triangle and in the same manner if you have were to have a parallelogram so when i say parallelogram it might either be a square it might be a um rectangle it might be another figure as well any other it might be a rhombus as well getting it okay so general yeah. formula to find the area of parallelogram is base into height Okay. Yes. Right. Okay, but if the parallelogram is mentioned at, uh, as a square and rectangle, you have to go with these two formulas. That is quite obvious. Okay. Then circle yeah. pi r square. Getting it over. Yes. Yes. Okay. And what was the value of pi calculated by this? Twenty two point seven. Thirty point three point one one. 
3.14 or in the form of fraction it's 22.7 22.7 yes yeah. and look at the perimeters for square since all the sides are same so simply so you simply multiply it with 4 four into then five. two twice of length plus breadth then for triangle simply add the three sides okay then for parallelogram twice three. of sum of adjacent sides getting it and circle 2 yes. pi r so these are the common things you guys are already aware of okay Hmm. Now yeah. let's move on. Now, so now we have started our discussion of the two D shapes. So we have come to the second part of the chapter. First thing we have discussed. Now let's talk about area of a trapezium. So before we talk about it, uh, one of you, uh, let's say Arhan, you define me what type of a quadrilateral is called as trapezium. Yeah. What type of a figure is called as tra trapezium? What is the basically definition of a trapezium? Mm -hmm. uh, sir, trapezium is a uh, shape which ha uh, which two sides are parallel. And. Mm -hmm. And uh, and its other two sides are not parallel together. Okay. Okay. One pair of sides are parallel, while other pair of sides are not parallel. Not that parallel. is simply a trapezium, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, very good. It's a quadrilateral whose two sides are parallel, and if its non-parallel sides are equal, then it is said to be an isosceles trapezium. That is another thing. Trapezium. That yeah. is another thing. But general thing is that the the another pair of sides are not parallel. Now, in case in this figure, it looks like the other pair of sides. Other pair of non-parallel sides, they seem to be what? They seem to be e equal, equal in length. Okay. Yeah. So one of the type of a trapezium is a trapezium. Let me write it over here. It's already written over here. No need to rewrite, rewrite it. So a trapezium in which non-parallel sides are equal, they will be called as isosceles trapezium. In the same manner, in the yeah. uh, triangle, now we when two sides are equal, we call them as isosceles triangle. So in the same manner here we are calling, getting it, guys. Yeah. Okay. Now, what? Uh, how do we calculate area of a trapezium? Hmm. Yes. Look here. Uh, uh, is it? Mm -hmm. Um. When we um find the area of a trapezium, it's like isosceles or all the sides are equal. All the sides are? No, no. Equal simply just just take a simple trapezium. Okay, you are provided with a trapezium. Let's say I give you a trapezium like this. Okay. That is also yeah. trapezium. Okay. Yes. So how do you calculate the area of this trapezium? Hmm? So you will basically divide the trapezium. One of the methods yeah, into a rectangle simply, and yeah. And so, a rectangle and triangle. Hmm, hmm. So here, if the figure is like this, then you can simply divide it into a rectangle and then a triangle. Right. So yes. you will be required to find area of this rectangle and then area of this triangle. Now. Triangle. Yes. Getting it. So once you yeah. have found them, you can simply add them. Okay. And we know the in order to find the area of triangle, the formula required is half into base into height. Base into height. Getting it. Yes. So this much of length, this much of let's let's call it to be A, B, C, D, and E. So this much of length AB will be its base now, right? And the height will be this CA. Since it's a rectangle and in the uh, all the sides meet each other at 90 degree, so that will be serving as height for this triangle as well, right now. So this one is 90 degree. We know every each and every angle in a rectangle is 90 degree. So if it's this, this one is 90, this one is also going to be 90, right? So half into AB into AC. Getting it, guys? Yeah. Yes, sir. And we know in order to calculate the area of rectangle, it is simply AC gonna be multiplied with EA. Right. Yeah. So in this manner, we can calculate the area of a trapezium. Okay, but what if you were to have a figure, Arhan? <coughs> what if you were to have a figure which does not look like this? Yeah. So are we saying that? I 
Mm. It might be an isosceles trapezium and not not be an isosceles trapezium. The figure might look like this as well, no? Okay. The figure might look like that that as well. Getting it. So how do we calculate in that case? So look here. The first method we have already discussed that by splitting the figure. Getting it. Okay, so yes, suppose sir. this type of figure we discussed, suppose if you were to have this type of figure, so in this one, you will split the figure again. So you will basically try to make a rectangle out of it, rectangle in it, getting it guys. So you are left yes, with this, this rectangle. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So you are left with the rectangle a b c d and you are left with other two triangles right now so suppose the yes, lengths are, lengths are given here so let's say it is 5 it is 3 it is 10 right the lengths are uh, let's say given here so you can calculate it in that case as well and let's say this one is also given let's call it to be 4 right so what did you discuss i just got i just got removed from the meeting and yeah, Arham, basically, uh, we say uh, we were discussing the first method by splitting the figure. So if you were to have a figure like this, right? Yeah. If you were to have a figure like this, so basically we have divided the figure into two parts, a rectangle and a triangle here. Yeah. Now, again, if you were to have a figure like this, figure number two over here. So here you will be dividing the figure in the form of a rectangle and then two triangles. And then you will be adding the area of the three. Getting it? Right now. Yeah. Okay. So suppose if you were to, uh, uh, suppose, uh, let's try to find the area of this figure. So if this one is 10, this one is also 10 here. Right? Okay. Yeah. And the height is also given over here. So we know the formula to find the area of this rectangle is simply length into breadth. Yes, sir. Getting it. So it's going to be how much? 40, let's say it's centimeter, 40 centimeter square. Right, guys. Okay, now talking about this one. Okay, so since this one is four, this one is also four. And the base, the measurement of base is given here. I'm talking, talking about this triangle BCF. Let me write it over here. Triangle BCF. Yeah. Arham, are you able to relate? Any difficulty? No. Okay, good. So okay. it's going to be half into base into height. Base into height. Right. Right. Half into three yeah. into four. Right. Now talking about yes. another triangle, triangle ADE. And this one yeah. also base is given and height is given. Yes. Half into yes, five yes, into sir. four. Right now. Yes. So it's 10 centi square centimeter here. Then it's yes. six square centimeter yes. over here. Right. 16 so centimeter square. Yeah. That is 16 centimeter square. That is the area yes. of the two triangles. These two. Now hmm. this one is also yes, here, no? the area of rectangle. Simply add them. So it's going to be 40 plus 16. 50. 66 square 56. centimeter. 56, right? right? Yeah, 56. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. It's 56 square centimeter, right, guys? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, what if I say that we can actually have a formula to find the area of a trapezium? Hmm? Yeah. So you can actually have a formula. And the formula is actually half multiplied length of the parallel sides multiplied the distance between them. Getting it? I basically yeah. say it here. Half so get the height. And the breadth. Yeah. So suppose you call this much of length to be A here. And this mm. length here is B. So you will be B. simply adding them. Yeah. Okay. And then multiplying the height between them. Suppose this, the height between them is H here. 5 centimeters. Getting mm. it. <laughs> so H yes. here. So that is the formula. Okay. So that is how yeah. you can calculate it using the formula. That was another way. And in fact, that one is more convenient. And in most of the cases, it's better to use the formula if the length of the two sides are given. Right? If the yeah. length of the two sides and height are given. So you can calculate it directly. Okay. So we can okay. basically say that area of trapezium is half the product of the summation of the 
parallel sides and the perpendicular. This height we can also yes. call it as perpendicular as well, no? Yes. Right. Okay. Now let's calculate this one. If you guys got this one. Now try to find the area of this figure, both of you, and uh, give you answers in the comment section. Uh, uh, sorry, in the chat box. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Did you got it? Yes, I've got it. Hmm. <clears throat> yes, that is correct. We have sent it. Arhan, yeah. That is good. Uh, Arhan, that is correct. Uh, Arham, I'm waiting for your answer. Yeah. Hmm. So this is the area, right? Yeah, we have to find the area. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've sent. I guess you have sent on the wrong uh, ID. Hmm. Send it on the one one we share. Arham, Arhan has also sent. Mohammed Sohil, not yeah. my my, uh, not my full name. Yes. Oops. Yeah, now I received it. Very good, guys. So that is the that is fifty five centimeters square. Okay. Yeah. Now this another there uh, there was another way also to uh, using which we could have found the uh, found the answer of this one. That is the first method, right? Yeah. So suppose if the question yeah. asks you to find the area by splitting the trapezium. So in uh, uh, as per the figure, you can divide it like this here, right? So we have taken a triangle a rectangle out of it and yeah. two triangles here right okay yeah. so here you see basically the two triangles have been added like this yeah. okay now the question here is now how do you find the base of the triangle like height is already given now the height of this rectangle will also yeah. be the height of the triangle as well now yeah. Yeah. it is going to be height for this triangle as well but what about yeah. this base? What is the length of this one? The sixteen centimeters. Yeah. No, sixteen centimeters. No, look over here. No, 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 sir. The sir, opposite. The, uh, yeah. The mm -hmm. sixteen minus six. Uh, mm -hmm. as the. Uh, uh, the. The mm -hmm. uh, starting of 16 the. Sixteen minus six. Uh, that is back to ten. Yeah. Ten. Yes, sir. Yeah, the opposite sides of the triangle are equal. So this one is also equal, no? Right. Yeah. So this one is only six centimeter, while these two yes. are ten centimeter, right? Ten centimeter. And in this hmm. particular figure, both the triangles uh, are actually identical. Get yes. it over. Yeah. So we have basically combined the two triangles like this and have taken the combined length. But you don't have yeah. to do this for each and every triangle. Getting it because here yes. the two triangles are identical, that's why we have taken this 10 centimeter as base of both the two triangles combined. Suppose if the yes. triangle was like this, right? So you had to solve it in, the, in another way, you had mm -hmm. to take different bases for the two figures right yeah. now. So here you will be getting half, you will be so half we, into. Uh, mm -hmm. When will we know that uh, we have to use the formula or when will we know that we have to make the uh, rectangles and two triangles? Huh. Look, you you will have to use it based on the question, right? Okay. okay, generally the formula, if you get it, is half into A plus B into height. So if you are provided yeah. with, with the values of both the lengths and the height, then you can use it right now. Okay. In this case also, the length are provided, right? In this figure right. also, the length, basically the length of the parallel sides and the height is also provided. So it's better yeah. to use the formula, 
I have also <laughs> taken a remark here that we should use the formula most of the time if possible as it is the quick and easy method. But okay. otherwise, if the question de deliberately asks you to solve it using the splitting method, you have to then okay. take this method. Okay. Getting it, guys. So here it's yeah. 25 and here it's 30 square centimeter. So 30 plus yeah. 25, that yes, is 35 sir. square centimeter. All right. Okay, there's one more question which I have taken for you guys. Quickly solve it and give you answer in the comment section. Yeah. Okay, after this, we will move to next 2D figure. <laughs> so we have to solve it through the uh, one by two uh, method. Yeah, exactly. As I said, it is more convenient. Okay, sir. Hmm. All right, Arham. Okay. Okay, Arham, I'm waiting for your answer. <laughs> Yeah, meanwhile, Arham, you define me. What do you mean by quadrilateral? Um, quadrilateral has um, two um, uh, mm -hmm. two. <coughs> I'm not able to spell it. It's quad now. Quadrilateral. Yeah. So quad means four. four. Right now. Yes. Mono. By try then quad so quad means four. Mm. So since we are talking about here two D shapes, so if a shape that has got four sides, getting it, mm. so that yes. will be called as quadrilateral. Quadrilateral. No, uh, Arhan, that is not correct. In fact, the unit that have that you have mentioned that is also wrong. Look here, no, the formula is half into. I I think you you missed the formula. That's why you got the answer wrong. Otherwise, it was too easy. And so here, simply A and B are given, no? The length yeah, of the parallel 95. sides 50 and 45. So that will be 95. 50 plus 45, 95. Multiply yes. 30. 30. 200 right, so 15, yeah. 90 multiplied. 95 15. multiplied 15, no? So that is somewhere yeah. around 425 meters square, yes. square meter. Got this, Arhan? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let's moving on. Let's talk about another type of figure. Uh, quadrilateral. In fact, the trapezium which we are talking about, that is also a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral, right. yeah. So, a quadrilateral, basically, you see, here it looks like a parallelogram, right? Yes. Here in this particular case, it looks like a parallelogram. What a quadrilateral could look like that as well. Getting it? It yeah, it has look, four sides. It could look like this as well. So necessary condition is that it, it will be having four sides and some of all the interior angles that is going to be how much? So, uh, uh, 360. 360. Yeah, okay, can, 360. can we prove that practically? Yes, sir. How? <clears throat> can we prove that practically? Okay, look. Practically, I mean, what? Like, uh, if can you prove this via an activity? How all the um internal angles, uh, the, the their summation is equal to three sixty degree. So basically, what you can do now, just draw any quadrilateral on a piece of paper, and carve yeah. out all the angles using a piece of scissor. Yeah. Carve out all the angles, and basically place them together, align them around a point, getting it. And mm. you will see yes, that it will sir. follow 
full circle and we know yeah. that the angle around is around a point is how much 360 degree 60 so, right hmm. so in that manner you can prove it getting it now yeah hmm. okay good now in order to find the area of any quadrilateral we can divide it into two triangles okay and then the area can yeah. be calculated easily by yeah. finding out the areas of the two triangles separately right now sure. okay so for example if you were to have a um quadrilateral let's say this quadrilateral a b c and d yeah. that is an example of a quadrilateral in which you can see sure. there are two triangles namely triangle a b c and triangle a d c right now yeah this triangle yes sir and this one guys okay and we know to yes. find the uh, and we know uh, <clears throat> a general quadrilateral will be not given like this the question it might not be given like this it might simply be like this getting it over so in, so yeah. in order to do that we will simply split it into two triangles only not four okay so mm. in order to do that we will basically be joining the opposite vertex yeah okay yes then from the opposite vertex opposite vertex let's say b here and opposite vertex b here we will draw perpendicular on the diagonal ac yeah yeah so we have drawn a perpendicular why we are doing this because yes. we know the formula to find the area of a triangle is half multiplied base multiplied height yes, you know, height yeah so this yes, perpendicular sir. drawn from the opposite vertexes that will basically serve as the purpose of height right now so let's say it to be k and let's say it to be m over here this point right now yes so the area of this figure will be area of triangle abc plus area of triangle acd ACD, right now. Yeah. So for triangle ABC, it's going to be what half into base that base is into height. the diagonal AC here and height. For okay. example, you're talking about triangle ABC, right? So it will be BM yeah. right now. This okay. BM over here. Yes. And for area is area of triangle ACD is will be half multiplied AC multiplied BK right now. Okay. Yeah. So that is pretty simple, no? <laughs> we have done this, right? We have done this. In my homework. Uh, in your yeah, in your holiday homework, no? Yeah, yeah. Yes. There we discuss some similar question. <coughs> Good. Okay, Arhan got this one, and Arham. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so so that is was pretty simple. Now let's solve a question on this and find the area of this quadrilateral using this formula. Yeah, solve this one. We have got the triangles and their heights are also given here. And this five centimeter here now is the measurement of the diagonal BD. Hmm. BD equals to five centimeter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Solve this one. All right. <clears throat> so right now you guys are solving it using the conventional method like the general method which we know okay but we yeah. will also have a look at the special formula required to solve this question sure, okay. okay 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 got it okay waiting for arhan i'm waiting for your answer
you have sent how much? What is the answer? Oh, this let me check. No, no, no. Fifty centimeters, or say fifty square centimeter, and twelve point five square centimeter. Okay, let me verify this one. Okay, area of triangle A B D. So it's going to be half into base into height. Yeah. Half into base into this height over here, and area. Hmm. Of triangle BDC that is going to be half into half into two into, two into five. five. Right. Yes. So it's two, two point five plus into five. five. Then, no? Not yeah, into plus five. five. So why do I'm, you have I'm, to multiply? I had multiply. <laughs> okay, multiply. You have it. to simply yeah add them. No, so mm. it's yes, seven point five. five square centimeter. Okay, Ten and Arhan, Arhan, you please tell me where did you went wrong. <laughs> yeah. Sir, sir, I also multiply. Okay, no, no, no. We have to add them. No, look at this add hmm. this, uh, sign of addition over here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, but one more observation has to be done in this one. Hmm? We uh, ma, I, oh, ma, uh, <coughs> that actually you guys missed here. Look here, the diagonal that is BD here is same for hmm? both of them. Is common now. Yeah. Okay. I'm clearing it and then I'm giving you the alternate formula right here. The formula for the area of a general quadrilateral. So far, we have been doing it in the conventional method, simply dividing the quadrilateral into two triangles and then adding their area. And that takes yeah. a considerable amount of time. Right now, in exam, yes. we need to solve it. Uh, as although we have to solve it as per the method prescribed in the question, but what if you were to be sitting in the competition? You need the shortest method possible. Okay. So, if I were to write it, just the formula is going to be half multiplied uh, uh, the both the heights. Let's say it to be h one over here, right? Height one. Let's okay. say to be height two. You will be simplifying simply uh, adding the height and then multiplying it with the given diagonal. Diagonal is what that is. Oh, BD. I got it. Got mm -hmm. it. Okay. Yeah. We can actually we just multiply this one the base. Mm -hmm. uh, we multiply the base and add the height, and then <laughs> yeah. we put it in the normal mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you guys like, we can actually derive this one as well, but that is not mm -hmm. necessary. So simply yes. remember this formula, memorize this one. All right, now Arhan yeah. and Arham. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Arhan, you can also keep your camera on the on the class, right? It's better. Okay. So I know you guys would like to solve one more question using that form. Yeah. Solve this question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, Arhan. <clears throat> okay. 
Arhan, you have sent your answer. Arham also, you also sent your answer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sending. Is it correct? Mm -hmm. Let me check. Yeah, that is correct. Good. Very good. <coughs> okay, meanwhile, Arham is solving. You mention some of the quadrilaterals. Arhan, give some of the some of examples of quadrilaterals. Yeah. And uh, the square. A square. Rectangle. Rectangle. Yeah, let me check it. And and what else? The, uh, Rhombus? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what about kite? What about kite? Yeah, Ram, that is also correct. Very good, guys. Kite is also a uh, quite little, no? Yeah. Very yes, good. Mm, but are the sides parallel to each other in a kite? No, sir. No. Right. So, kite looks like this <laughs> right now. And the sides, in fact, are not parallel. So these two sides are equal. These two sides are equal. And the diagonals, in fact, bisect each other at 90 degree. Getting it now? Hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. So basically, this bigger diagonal, let's call it capital D, and this, let's call it small d. The bigger diagonal bisects the small diagonal into two equal halves. Right now? Hmm. But the diagonal, yeah. bigger diagonal, that does not itself get divided into two equal halves. Right now? This one is smaller and this, this one is greater. While yeah. these two are equal. Right, good. Okay, now let's moving on. Let's talk about some special types of quadrilaterals. So as I told you guys yeah. about a rhombus. So what is a rhombus? Yes. A rhombus is a special type of quadrilateral, but it's, it's better to say it's a parallelogram in which all the sides are parallel and all of them are equal to each other. Right, and the diagonals mm -hmm. bisect each other at 90 degree and bisect each other. Remember, uh, uh, notice the word bisect. So that means div uh, divide each other into equal halves. Right now. Yeah. Now talking about the length of the diagonal D1 here and diagonal two, di uh, diagonal uh, D2 here, are they equal in measurement? No, they are not equal no, in not measurement. Sure. Getting it over. Mm, okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so that is about a uh, uh, rhombus here, right? So we will talk about yeah. how do you calculate the area of a rhombus using the normal method and how do you uh, how do you use its formula? But the interesting hmm. thing is we will be deriving its formula. So we have got six minutes. So let's see if we can understand it because that's a lengthy concept, a bit of lengthy concept, right now. So Sir, rhombus. Do you have to do this like a trapezium. Like the strap is in. No, simply, simply now you basically need to draw the diagonals in this one. Huh? Simply draw the diagonal, and the triangle will be getting uh, the uh, uh, ra ra rhombus will be getting divided into two equal, two triangles basically, right now. Yeah. And then you can add the area of the two triangles, and you can get the area of the full figure that yeah. is rhombus here. But we have got a formula yes. also. So before coming to that, rhombus. As I just mentioned, that point number one, all sides are equal. Getting it. Point number two, mm. opposite pair of sides are parallel to each other. Yeah. Okay. And diagonals bisect each other. Yes. Diagonals at what angle? 120? Huh? 90. 90 degree. No, sir. 90 degree. Very good. Diagonals bisect each other at right angle that is 90 degree and diagonals are not equal. D1 is not equal to D2. Remember this thing. D2. Hmm. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, the formula required to calculate before coming to that, <laughs> I actually need to discuss about one more thing. Look here. The formula of a rhombus can be calculated in three different ways. Have you guys heard of the word trigonometry? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the 
three method includes what in the first method if the base and height are given you can calculate it very easily simply base yes. multiplied height will be giving height. you the answer yeah if you have got this yes. base over here and the height also mm. if that is also yes. given, you can calculate it okay but what if the height is not given only the diagonals are given so you can calculate in that manner as well and you can calculate it using trigonometry as well but we as per class 8 syllabus we don't have to study that getting it now yeah so first mm. method as i said it's when bases and base and height are given hmm. okay then next method is using diagonals right now yeah and the third one is trigonometry <laughs> but that is not part of the current syllabus we don't we okay. won't be studying about that okay so for hmm. example for the simple formula if it almost equals to base into height so you were to find the area of a rhombus in which base and height are given as follows. So quickly find the answer. Yeah. What is the answer going to be? The 70, uh, the 70, 70 square 30. inches. <laughs> right. yes, sir. 70 what? 70 yeah. square inches. No? Square inches. Yes, sir. Okay. That, is, that was very simple. No. Yeah. Now let's talk about the diagonal formula. So I have written the conclusion here. That is going to be the formula. If any one of you finds this difficult, you guys can simply remember the formula. It will work for you. But still, we will be. <laughs> so yeah. the formula is easy. <laughs> the formula is quite easy here. Yes, okay, we will still be looking at its derivation if the time permits, because we have got only two minutes left here. Hmm? Let's see if we yeah. can cover uh, as many points. So here, if you observe this. Um, you know, uh, rhombus ABCD, you will see that since all the sides are equal, so we can say that AB equals to BC equals to CD equals to DA. Right now, all the sides yes, are equal. Sir. So we can say that all the four sides of a uh, rhombus are congruent. Congruent. This yeah. term, you guys are aware of it or not? Hmm? Yes. Like if I have got two triangles in which the sides, let's say side AB is equal to side BC, okay, side BD is equal to side, uh, side, uh, side CE. We say that they are congruent to each other. Getting it now? Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. Now also look at the diagonals AC and BD. They are not equal. Don't get confused about that. As we have discussed prior uh, to this thing as well. The opposite angles in the rhombus are also equal. So angle A is equal to angle C and angle B is equal to angle D. Right now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And as I said, angle A equals to angle C and angle B equals to angle D. Getting it. So we can actually say here that triangle ABC, this triangle, yeah. can't we say that it is congruent to triangle ACD or ADC? Yes, sir. Right. Yes. Because this side is equal to this side. This yeah. side is equal to this side. And this side AC is common to both of them. Have you guys studied yeah. about S, S, S congruency, side, side congruency? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Not yes, either. Sir. Or um, no. basically, basically, look. If in the two triangles, all the sides are equal, basically yeah. adjacent sides, not, not uh, in that manner. If adjacent sides are yeah. equal, right yeah. now. So if you were to yes. overturn this circle, or overturn this triangle, so it will be looking like this, yeah. no? Right now. Yeah. So it will be D A C now. So side A B is equal to side A D. Side B C is equal to side C D here, and side. AC is common in both of them. Common, yeah. So using the side, yes, side, sir. side property, this congruency, we can say that both of the triangles are congruent to each other. Congruent basically means if you were to place one above another, they will be basically overlapping each other, covering each other in yeah. their areas. Right. So equal. Hmm. Right. Yeah. So as we talked about quadrilateral, we basically split them into two triangles and then add them. So here the area we can simply say that area of triangle ABC plus area of triangle what? ADC now? BCD. Yeah, ADC. Yes, sir. Yeah. And we know that both of them are equal. Right yeah. Yes, sir. So can't we say that it's twice of area of triangle ABC since both of them are yeah. equal? Yes, sir. Getting it now. So we can say it yes. over here. So we will keep our discussion here only. In the next class, we will be concluding. Getting okay, it, guys. Yes, sir. 
and try to cover the questions of the first exercise all okay. right yes sir yeah <laughs> okay then guys i love us starts it for today i love i love it sir yeah <laughs>